Welcome to episode 56 of the RSA Resident and Student Podcast Series, a production of the American Academy of Emergency Medicine Resident and Student Association. RSA is an accessible, collaborative organization that fosters innovation, education, and advocacy for residents and students in emergency medicine. In this episode, Trisha Morshed, a resident of the University of California San Diego Medical Center and past RSA board member, speaks with Daniel Goodrich, the YPS president. Today, Drs. Morshad and Goodrich discuss navigating your career path post-residency. Hi, I'm Trisha Morshad. I'm a fourth-year resident at UC San Diego, and I'm here interviewing Dr. Danielle Goodrich. Thanks, Trish. I'm happy to be here. I am the YPS president and currently work in Los Angeles, California. I'm glad you're here. For a lot of us seniors that are graduating this year, we had some difficulty navigating the process of how to look for a job, how to make a CV and that kind of thing. So we figured we would kind of talk about some of those things and how you you navigated that process. Maybe you could give us some tips. So my first question for you is with all the job options that are out there, it was really difficult to know how to look for a job um, and compare different job opportunities. Like when I was first looking, I didn't, there were so many options out there and not a really good way to evaluate, you know, is one better than the other. And I didn't really know what kind of questions to ask. Since you've gone through the process pretty recently, can you walk us through how you found a job and decided to accept an offer? Yes. So I think the first step is deciding what kind of practice you want to work in. So if you want to go more the academic route, do you want more of a community job? Are you looking for something that has a little bit of both? Or are you interested in kind of getting out of practice and into some sort of business or government relations? So once you figure out that, then the next thing becomes geography and where you want to live, where your significant other, your family, and what are, what is important to you. And then after that, I would say, comes kind of the culture of the hospitals you're looking at. Once you've narrowed down what kind of hospitals you're looking at, where you want to do it, and once you start looking at hospitals or companies or groups, kind of the culture of that group and uh, kind of what attracts you to that kind of facility in terms of compensation, coverage, malpractice, you know, the group itself. And so once you get a little bit more of what you want, you can start asking some of the more detailed questions. Mm-hmm. Great. Um, yeah, that's all good advice. The other thing that we kind of think about as we're graduating is the the board exam. And when should we start thinking about it? When should we sign up for it? And do you have any good study tips for the oral board exam? So once you graduate, um, you'll get kind of an email or a letter in terms of when to start applying for the written boards. The written boards are offered in the fall, and once you pass them, then you have the opportunity to take your oral boards, which are either in the spring or the fall, based upon kind of when you are selected. So once you graduate, it's a good time to start preparing for the written boards. YPS has a flashbacks on the go app, which is great. If you're on a shift and want to run through some flashcards, you have a few extra minutes. Oftentimes, people do board review courses. Um, There are different question banks available. And so I would start with those. And if once you pass the written boards, next step is oral boards. And again, um, I think there are oral board courses. There's a book that's really handy. Um, But the most important thing is practice, just back and forth with your colleagues, your co-residents, and just running through cases and kind of understanding kind of the process of the oral boards mm-hmm. is the most important. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. So obviously you're the YPS president, so you're very involved in AEM. Can you tell us a little bit more about staying involved in AEM and how YPS has benefited you, kind of where you're planning on going with your involvement with AEM in the future? Mm-hmm. So YPS, the Young Physician section, is an active section that kind of includes first-time fellows, attendings up to year five of practice, and we are free for all young physicians, so we're looking forward to more people joining us. But I got involved as an opportunity to kind of, I work in a community practice, and this was an opportunity for me to stay involved, meet other people, kind of figure out my place in medicine and in my practice, and I think that that's the same for others. Oftentimes, it's a smooth transition from RSA or residency to kind of stay involved 
and focus on things that benefit young physicians like CV review, board review, things that we are focusing on kind of in the beginning of our career. Mm-hmm. And I'm staying on for another year of president. Oh, nice. Presidency. Congratulations. So, thank you. Mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to more activities, more programming, hoping to revamp our mentorship program and come up with some new fresh ideas for the future. Cool. What kind of projects are you guys working on right now? So we're very excited to work with you guys on this podcast and hoping to do more in the future. We are focusing a lot on education and kind of have a common sense article every edition. So we're always looking for more writers. So Mm -hmm. if anyone's interested in getting involved, they can contact us for um, writing opportunities, really hoping to enhance, kind of again, our our CV and our mentorship program to kind of help all the young physicians who are graduating and looking for jobs. Great. Yeah, it sounds like you guys are doing a lot of cool things. I wish I'd known about YPS earlier because I would have, by the time I found out about it, it, the elections had already happened. And I think a lot of us in RSA were kind of like, oh, we wish we knew about it. We should collaborate more. So hopefully next year we will kind of do more projects with you guys and, and be more you know that would be great um it's not too late though you can join our education committee um just send us an email if you're interested in getting involved okay great maybe i'll go ahead and do that so to shift gears a little bit going back to jobs and applying for jobs when i was making my cv this year i realized that the last cv that i made was in college (laughs) most of us new grads you know i'm assuming haven't made a cv in a little while what being somebody who's in the community You know, I think you'd be a good person to answer some of those questions about what do you put on your CV if you're going if you're interested in community practice, because for academics, they're probably looking for research and um, public, you know, publications. How do you tailor your CV for the community? Great question. So definitely tailoring your CV to who your reader is, is very important. So as you mentioned, if you're going into academics, kind of highlighting kind of your papers, your research should be at the top of your CV, you know, in terms of the community. Smooth and organized is the key to any CV, but focusing on any sort of work experience, any other jobs you've held, and also kind of what you've done in residency in terms of projects, education, those are really important. Employers are looking for someone who wants to get involved, oftentimes in the hospital, um, you know, with teaching in the department. So while, yes, there might be a more focus on what Kind of background you have in terms of prior employment, moonlighting opportunities in residency, highlighting kind of everything you've done in residency is also a bonus. Yeah, I'm sure they're looking for a lot of the leadership opportunities and some of the same kind of things. Yeah, they're oftentimes looking for the next person who will be a leader in their department. How did you prepare for your first interview? Did a lot of research in the hospital, mm-hmm. um, looking as to why I chose that hospital to be interviewing at, what are the things that stood out to me what my interests are, and why I would be a good fit in their hospital. And I also prepared questions in terms of what I was looking for, so things that were important to me that I wanted to know before I started. Mm -hmm. The work environment, um, kind of consultant interaction, what opportunities are available for me to join leadership in terms of committees, schedule, so kind of anything that you want to know before you'd sign a contract, I would kind of prepare um, before your interview things mm-hmm. that are important to you. Mm-hmm. And um, what kind of questions should we be asking? I mean, you kind of mentioned some of those already, mm-hmm. but I think as as a resident, it's hard to know the, di- the, the dynamics of different groups and what kind of different things we should be asking about, like, you know, in terms of scheduling mm-hmm. and compensation and interactions with consultants and that kind of thing. Yes, yeah, so all those are great questions to start in terms of compensation, bonuses, if you are going to be on a partnership tr- partnership tract and how that works you know what is the time frame for that things like scheduling overnights vacations are important as well that might come later I mean I think the big thing is understanding the culture kind of how long people have worked there what are some of the things that might bother or the other physicians aren't happy about it's, it's good to know kind of what makes people happy at the job? Yeah. What are some of the frustrations? That's you know, a really good point. Everywhere you work is going to have <laughs> pros and cons. There's going to be good aspects, not so great aspects, but things that you can fix. And so just kind of looking for what's important to you, what feels right. 
Mm-hmm. So you should probably do a little bit of thinking before you go in about what, what kind of environment you want to work in. And, mm-hmm. and get an opportunity to kind of walk around, see if you have any time to kind of interact with the physicians who are working, get to know them, ask them questions, mm-hmm. and watch how their practice styles are if you have the opportunity. Mm-hmm. Did you interview at a lot of different sites or did you kind of pick one that you thought that you would like and and um, ended up going with that one? Yes, um, I interviewed at a lot of different places, kind of in and outside of LA. I was trying to decide kind of where I wanted to live and what kind of practice I wanted to work at. And so I did interview for a handful, Mm -hmm. and I think it was a good mix for me to be able to see what kind of practice I wanted. Every practice I interviewed with was very different. Yeah, and it probably gives you a better idea of what's out there and the variety. And it's good to meet other people who you're going to be working amongst in the area. Yeah, that makes sense. Because <laughs> I'm sure there's such a small world and there's a lot of overlap with a lot of jobs, I'm sure. Definitely. So when did you when did you start thinking about applying for jobs? And when did you start you know, reaching out and applying? So about, I would say, a little over a year before graduation, I was starting to decide kind of what are my overall interests, what, where am I interested in living? And then took the opportunity to start looking, meet different people at Scientific Assembly. Always brought my resume to Scientific Assembly to see if I can meet people or show my interest. And then a little less than a year before I graduated, probably about 10 months or so, I started to make phone calls to the places I was interested in and start to get interviews. Oftentimes, um, there kind of are rolling jobs available. So some some people may start to get jobs in the fall, but jobs will open up later on. Um, if you're waiting to hear back from a fellowship, it may take you a little bit more time based on that decision. But I would say sometime in the fall before you graduate is a good place to start calling, emailing, looking, and getting your list together. Mm -hmm. So you started a couple months before you graduated? Yes. Okay, great. Did it seem like there were a lot of jobs still out there? Yeah, so at every stage I was, there were oftentimes opportunities available, and Mm -hmm. if there wasn't a job available right away, there was the assumption that things were going to be opening up in the future and that I should kind of keep calling or kind of apply in the future when the job market and their kind of positions opened up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That makes sense. So I think a lot of us are nervous about our first day as an attending. <laughs> um, what tips do you have for us and what what did you do to prepare for your first day? So um, before my first day, I um, worked with my chief, got to know some of the other um, attending physicians that I worked with to get a sense of kind of what the practice environment was. I did have the opportunity to do a uh, shadow shift before I started, which was reassuring to me, kind of to understand the workflow of the practice, kind of got ready, and that first day is tough. You're getting to know your nurses, your consultants, but just like you did in residency, it's emergency medicine, and you still love it, and it's great to meet new patients and to kind of develop your practice style. Every day gets smoother and more successful. <laughs> That's good. Good things to look forward to. Yes. <laughs> Did you end up getting disability insurance when you started, or do you recommend that um, young physicians get disability insurance? And I've heard kind of conflicting things on this in the past. So um, I did end up getting disability insurance at the end of residency prior to starting my job. My job does offer um, a component of disability insurance as well. So I think it's important to look at kind of where you're going to be working and if they offer you any disability insurance I think it it is important for the future. Mm -hmm. Did you stay at the first job that you started? I'm currently still working at my first job. Really? And I'm very happy there. Great. Look forward to many more years. Cool. And how did you decide on Kaiser? So I decided you know based on location, values, kind of the people that I met, the people that I work with there. I love going to work every day. I love working with my patients, and I think it's a great system to work for. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, it seems like people are really happy there. Do you have any other advice for new grads or um, us graduating residents that want to stay involved with AEM? Yeah, so please join YPS. 
It is, as I mentioned before, um, open to all young physicians up to five years out of practice. We have free CV review, mentoring program. Um, we have a free flash facts app for board review studying. And we have writing opportunities. Please um, contact us if you're interested in writing for publishing an article in Common Sense or joining our education committee. And we also have a free Rules of the Road ebook that mm. kind of talks a little bit about what we've been talking about mm -hmm. in terms of CV, job process, kind of life as a new attending. That's actually a great book. I remember I got a, you guys used to send out hard copies of it before, that right? That is true, yeah. Yeah, I read it when I was um, an intern. It was really good. That's some so, good advice. Um, yes, it's still out there and available to all. Cool. That's good to know. Yeah, hopefully mo most of us will stay involved with AAM and I look forward to hopefully joining our YPS one day. Yes, we're excited to have you all. <laughs> Great. Cool. Well, thank you so much for coming here and talking to us. Um, that was a lot of really good advice and we look forward to working with you in the future. Thanks for having me. We hope you have enjoyed this podcast brought to you by the American Academy of Emergency Medicine Resident and Student Association. For more information about RSA, visit the website at www.aaemrsa.org. Listen to all podcasts in this series and explore the ways you can get involved with RSA. Join us again next episode for another topic of importance for emergency medicine residents and students.